What is your take on all this UAP disclosure stuff? Do you give it any in mind at all? Or are you busy with like real stuff? No, I mean, the thing is, there's a thing called the Fermi paradox. Yes. Which I think we talked about before yes. on the show. Yes. Which is, and the paradox is that if, if we haven't seen it, let's assume we haven't seen any evidence of anything. That's a paradox because, as I said, there are, we now know. We didn't when Fermi first posed it, by the way. We now know there are so many planets out there. So let's say trillions of planets in the Milky Way. The Milky Way has been there for over 13 billion years, pretty much the age of the universe. So if there's no one else out there, then the question is why? Because there's been so much time and so many places for civilizations to become space-faring civilizations. Right. As, as, you know, as, as Elon talks about, multiplanetary civilization. We're very close to becoming a multiplanetary civilization. And once you have become a multiplanetary and multistellar civilization, if you become that, you're immortal, basically, essentially. Mm, right. So the question is, the paradox is, why does it appear nobody has done that? So the first thing to say is, I, I would not be surprised. Right? If a UFO landed here now in the parking lot, I'd actually, not only would I not be surprised, I'd be relieved, actually. Because I'd be like, <laughs> this is good, because it'd be a weight off my shoulders, because I'm worried right. that we're the only, that ones. We're the only ones. That's and a terrifying scenario. And we're going to make a mess of it. Yeah. And so I, I'm worried that we could talk about but that. But isn't it bizarre? Like, the, one of the things that's fascinating about looking into the night skies, because it's so humbling, because it's so immense, it kind of puts everything into perspective, and it just gives you this, like, different view of the world. So the universe is so vast and so spectacular. Why is it so important that we exist? To us, it's so important that we exist. And if we make a mess of this and we wind up dying, the universe is so big. If we were the only intelligent life in the universe and it didn't matter, we blew ourselves up. Like, it's just a weird aberration that's attached to a survival instinct. Like, we're a weird biological aberration. So, so the... It, if you th think about, let's assume. So we did, we didn't finish the UAP thing. No, we'll so, get that. So I was just we'll saying, yeah. So, so I don't know about that, but anyway, let's assume just for the purposes of this that we're the only ones in in, in yeah. our galaxy. Let's say. Okay. Then I would argue that. So there's a question I ask in these live shows that I do. I start with a question, which is kind of a joke in a way, which is, what does it mean to live a finite, fragile life in an infinite, eternal universe? which is a good question, <laughs> right? That's what you're asking, yeah, right? What does it mean? To live this right. The, the first thing to say is meaning, right? What does it mean? That, that doesn't sound like a scientific concept in a way. Meaning, right. right? I would argue that whatever it is, it self-evidently exists because the universe means something to us. I would argue that it's a property of complex biological systems. So whatever it is, it's something that emerges, in this case, from human brains, it self-evidently exists. We, we, everyone who's listening to this knows that the, the world means something to them. So I would argue that if this planet is the only planet in our galaxy where complex biological systems exist right, at, at our level, then it follows. It's the only place where meaning currently exists in a galaxy of 400 billion suns. And therefore, I would argue just for that very basic point that we have a tremendous responsibility in some sense. Because if I, I, by the way, I gave a talk, a little video thing at the one of the climate summit, the COP climate summit in Glasgow in, in the UK a few years ago. And they asked me to do a little video uh, to the world leaders. And I think they thought I'd say, you know, welcome to Glasgow, have a nice meeting. But I, I made this little argument as fast as I could. I said, it's possible at least that this is the only place where complex biology has emerged in, in our galaxy. If that's true, this is the only island of meaning in a galaxy of 400 billion suns, and you are responsible for it because you are the world leaders. Therefore, if you destroy it through deliberate action or inaction, then each of you would be personally responsible for destroying meaning in a galaxy of 400 billion suns, potentially forever. Now go and discuss that. <laughs> was my <laughs> intro to Glasgow. Now, and we can all argue, because people have been listening to this going, this nonsense how can it be we, we can all argue about whether that's true uh, what i would say is given that as far as i'm aware we don't have any good evidence to the contrary that, which goes back to your previous question it's a reasonable working assumption so why don't we just operate on that basis 
And then, you know, it, yeah, if someone lands tomorrow, as I said, I'd be right. very delighted because then what I just said would be false. And we could relax a bit and go, it doesn't really matter if we destroy ourselves to some mm-hmm. extent. But so, so I think it, it, it's worth taking seriously the idea that civilizations are very rare. Now, and by the way, I used to say, so I probably last time I was on, actually, I used to say that in, in the far future, then the, the complex life will cease to exist. So it probably doesn't matter on a global scale. But it matters locally because of this idea that meaning emerges from complex biological systems. So if you don't care about that, what do you care about? But actually, I read a book. Have you had David Deutsch on the show? David Deutsch is a really interesting physicist. I he's don't a, believe I have. He's one of the um, no. founders of quantum computing. And, and okay. so he's a big figure in quantum computing in particular. But he's a great thinker. And he, he, I was reading some stuff he wrote recently. And he pointed out that it's not necessarily true that life is temporary because you could imagine a situation as you go into the far future let's imagine that we continue for a million years or a billion years as a civilization imagine what we could do it is possible that life can get so advanced in the universe that it can start to manipulate the universe itself so, or at least stars. You could ima- he said you could imagine, for example, just imagine. Mm-hmm. Really wild speculation. But imagine life gets so advanced that it can start to change the destiny of a star. Maybe it could start to add material into the star or something, right. you know, whatever. So uh, we, we don't know how to do that or if it's possible, but imagine it could. Then the evolution of stars, would life would matter in the sense that it could start to change the way that the universe behaves on a large scale in the future. And so it's, and it reminded me, actually, there's another great book by John Barrow and Frank Tipler called The Anthropic Cosmological Principle from the 1980s. It's one of my favorite books, actually. And I remembered it. And in there, they speculate about this life in the far, far future. And if it became powerful enough to manipulate the whole universe or the observable universe, mm. then suddenly... You it's can't got, make predictions about the far future yeah. w- unless you consider the possible impact of life on the universe. And, and whilst this is, I should say, it's w- wildly speculative, but it's actually logically, it's quite an interesting point. So, so I kind of disagree with myself a few years ago where I would have said that life is extremely valuable because it brings meaning to the universe, but temporarily. And so it... it it brings these brief, like, flickering candles of meaning, and then they go out again. But, it, but it's, it's worth considering. It might not necessarily be true that, if, if you really think. 